In this video, I'm going to go over how to get Super Nintendo games up and running in the Wii U version of RetroArch. The Super Nintendo remains to this day one of my favorite Nintendo systems to ever be released, and the fact that it started coming out on the Virtual Console with the Wii and continued with the Wii U made me really happy. Unfortunately, the Virtual Console never really included most of the games for the system I really enjoyed. I mean, it got most of them, but there are a few misses here and there, and I'm sure each of you have your own gripes and complaints about the way the Virtual Console was handled when it came to game titles. And then there's the quality of the Virtual Console emulation. It's pretty good, but, I mean, it's got some scaling issues, it's got the epilepsy filters and all that other stuff that really hold it back. And that's one of the great things about RetroArch on the Wii U. We can now play our Super Nintendo games, any of them that we want, and we get the added benefit of better accuracy and just overall a better experience. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to get Super Nintendo games added to your Wii U SD cards and get them put into RetroArch, how to make a playlist, and go over some of the core settings. So let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to need to get Super Nintendo games up and running on the Wii U are Super Nintendo games. So you can dump these from your own collection of physical Super Nintendo games. And you can do this really easily with a device like the Retro 2 if you are interested in dumping your own physical Super Nintendo collection. You can also dump them from the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console since you happen to have a modded Wii U now. So there is that process as well if you wanted to just take your Virtual Console games, put them in RetroArch to run them better. I really need to make a video about that at some point. But anyway, once you have your Super Nintendo games sourced... We just need to add them to our Wii U SD card, so I mean, make sure your Wii U is powered off, take the SD card out of your Wii U, put it into your computer, and once you have the SD card brought up, we just need to make a new folder to put all of our RetroArch games in. So you can name this whatever you want, it doesn't need to be named anything specific, you can place them anywhere really. For myself, I'm going to make a folder called RetroArch ROMs. And this is where I'm going to store all of my emulated games. So I'm just going to open that up. Close that folder down. I'm just going to copy the Super Nintendo games into my new RetroArch ROMs folder. And there we go. Once you have your games placed, you can close out of your SD card and take it out of your computer and put it back into the Wii U and turn it on. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video where I go over some initial RetroArch settings as well as installing this RetroArch forwarder channel. So if you'd like to see that process, go check out this video. But now that we got that out of the way, you just need to boot into RetroArch so you can do this either through the Homebrew Launcher or through the RetroArch forwarder channel. Now that RetroArch is booted, we are free to begin loading up our games, and this is a little bit different than any other version of RetroArch out there. Normally, you could just go down to Load Content, find your games, and select them, but on the Wii U version of RetroArch, it doesn't show you dynamic game lists. It only really shows you games for the core you currently have loaded, and by default it keeps loading into 2048 for me, so I can never see games. So, to see my Super Nintendo games, I basically go to Load Core, go to Nintendo, find SNES 9X and tell it to load. And then from here I can finally go into Load Content, go to my SD card, go to my RetroArch Retro ROMs folder, and then choose my SNES games and they all appear here. And then I could just press A on one, tell it to choose SNES 9X and it will begin playing. I was already not a fan of the load content method and on Wii U I'm even less so. So instead I'm gonna show you how to make a Super Nintendo games playlist. That way you could just automatically load into Super Nintendo games no matter what core is loaded. So for example here I'm gonna load back into 2048. And now I'm going to go over to the left side of the screen and go down to import content. From here I'm going to do a manual scan. I'm going to choose the content directory of my Super Nintendo games folder. So SD, RetroArch ROMs, SNES games, scan this directory. For system name I'm going to press right on my D-pad, scroll down to Nintendo and find Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And now for default core, I am going to press right on the D-pad again to go down to Nintendo. And I'm going to choose SNES 9X Current. 
There have been a number of forum posts that say they recommend SNES 9X 2010, but I've noticed no difference between the two, so I like to stick with the most current versions if I can. Now make sure you have scan recursively set to on if you have your games separated by subfolders, and if you have your games zipped, make sure you have scan inside archive set to on. But once you have these options set how you need, just go down to start scan. And when the scan is completed, you should have a nice new Super Nintendo playlist entry down here. And here are all of my Super Nintendo games. Now, for those of you looking to pretty up playlists, I will make a video on that in the future after I finish all the initial core videos, so just keep an eye out for that when it comes. But now I am free to begin loading up games, so I could just go down to a game regardless of what core I'm in. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, it still says I'm in 2048. But I'm going to boot into Mega Man X2 right here from the main menu. And there it is, Mega Man X2 loaded up in SNES 9X on a Wii U. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with how well SNES 9X is handling on the Wii U. I don't know why I expected it to run so poorly, but I really did. I guess I just uh, really underestimated the Wii U there, so sorry to all of you diehard Wii U fans. I underestimated it, my bad. I will give it more credit in future videos. This is awesome. And if you followed my initial setup guide, you also have uh, some really nice integer scaling going on on the Super Nintendo games, and they just look really fantastic to me. Like, this looks just so beautiful. And as you can see, performance is rock solid for Mega Man X2, and this is actually pretty good sign. And even one of the most demanding games on Super Nintendo, Super Mario World 2, runs without a hitch. So you should be good to go with any Super Nintendo game. Now just as a quick note on two player games, it doesn't seem like the Wii U version of RetroArch currently supports any Wii U Pro Controllers. I've been trying so hard to get Pro Controllers to work on this version of RetroArch, and while it detects them, they just are not usable inputs, so I'm not sure what to do about that right now. It might just be a current version bug. But as it stands today with me putting this video live, there is no multiplayer support in the Wii U version of RetroArch. HID controls and Wii U Pro controllers just do not work. So do keep that in mind if you were hoping to do multiplayer on this version of RetroArch. But now let's go over some of the more advanced core options that SNES 9X has to offer, and we could do this by pressing the home button on the Wii U gamepad, and that brings us to our RetroArch quick menu. From here we could scroll down to options, press A, so our first option is our console region. By default, this is set to auto, and that should be fine for most use cases, but if you want to set it to NTSC or PAL, you can do that here. Then there is the preferred aspect ratio. So this is four by three, an uncorrected aspect ratio if you prefer the eight by seven square pixel representation, auto, NTSC or PAL. I like 4x3 myself because TVs were designed to stretch the signal they got from a Super Nintendo into 4x3 rather than the 8x7 that they actually natively output. Next you can enable or disable the overscan crop, I like to leave it on. Next is a high res mode that can be enabled, I like to leave that on. Next we have high res blending, and so games that used high res mode, this blending was used to create shadows or transparency effects, so I like to turn this on for... I like to turn this on blur for accuracy's sake. Next is the Blarg NTSC filter. So this is kind of a built-in shader effect. So you can uh, mimic like an old school black and white TV, an RF signal, a composite signal, S-video signal, or an RGB signal. And I really like the way this looks. I just played through Link to the Past on stream not too long ago. And I'm not going to lie, this looks uh, pretty good to how it looked when I did that. So I think that's a pretty neat filter to have in place if you want it. Next is audio interpolation. I leave this on Gaussian because that mimics the original hardware a little bit more, but you could change it to something else if you want to have it be less bassy. Next is allow opposing directions. I'm not really familiar with this, so I, I don't know. If you know you need it, you know you need it. I haven't really ever seen a need for it. Next is Super FX Overclocking. So this is for games like Doom, Star Fox. You can actually overclock the Super FX chip up to 300, 400, like 500% to make those games run a lot faster. 
But if you actually start experiencing lag on those games that isn't typical hardware lag, you can actually underclock it as well to try to reduce it. You're just going to get slower game speed. Next, we have a reduced slowdown hack. This is basically to get rid of hardware-induced lag. You can mess around with this if you want to. I prefer to have my hardware lag myself, so I don't use it. Next, we have a sprite limit hack. So when there were too many sprites on a single scan line, they would start flickering. Some games use this as an effect. Others did not. But you could turn this on if you want to remove that flickering altogether. Again, I prefer accuracy, so I leave it off. Ignore randomized memory. Ignore block invalid VRAM access. Ignore echo buffer hack. And then next we have show light gun settings. So just enable this real quick by pressing A on it, back out of your options menu, then you can come back in. And now when we go back down, we have the light gun options. So we have a light gun mode. And if we change this to touchscreen input, we can actually do light gun games on the Wii U gamepad. So if you're gonna be playing Super Nintendo light gun games, Change this to touchscreen. And then you can switch your control type over to a light gun by pressing B to get out of the quick menu, go down to controls, and then going to port two controls, and you can change the device type to the super scope, justify, or a max rifle. You might also need to change the port two controls on the settings tab over to the Wii U gamepad. I don't have any light gun games, so I don't know the specifics for this, but I just wanted to show it just in case. Then you could also adjust things like crosshairs and stuff like that. And then you could also do it for justifiers, max, and things like that. But once you have these set, you can just turn off the light gun settings again to keep the menu less cluttered. And then next we have advanced audio and video settings. So same thing, you can press A on this to enable them, back out of the options menu, then come back in. And when you scroll down, you're gonna have a load of new video and audio options. And this is pretty neat. It lets you actually enable or disable different uh, visual layers. So like you get rid of background layers. And it's just so fun to mess with. Like, there we go, get rid of the HUD. Not sure what layer four does on uh, Link to the Past. Then you also get rid of sprite layer entirely if you just want to like record the background. Like this is great if you have like custom projects you're looking to do. But then you could also enable or disable transparency effects and enable different sound channels. So this is really fun to mess with if you just want to experiment with things. But for most users, you probably won't really be messing with this at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that back off. But that's really going to do it as far as core options are concerned. Once you have everything set the way you want, you could go down to the overrides option here and save a core override. So that way, every time you load up SNES 9X, these are the options that will greet you. Now, normally in this part of the video, I'd show you how to get shaders set up, but I'm currently having some issues with shaders and I can't get them to actually enable. So I'm gonna keep messing with this and make a dedicated shader video after the core videos going over shaders once I have it figured out what's going on. But that's pretty much going to do it as far as SNES emulation within the Wii U version of RetroArch is concerned. Get your games onto your SD card, make a playlist, and start playing. Not really a whole lot of configuration you need to do on this one, which makes it a great one to start with. You just pop your games in, start playing. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section down below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this go live. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and I am so grateful to all of you for that. If you're feeling extra generous and want to help keep the channel running, you can always hit that join button here on YouTube or check out Patreon as well. As always, I'm grateful for the consideration and a little really goes a long way, so thank you so much for that. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.